As an Azure security guy, I get tasked with sifting through tons of data all the time. Sometimes I'm looking for risky misconfigurations through the Azure resource graph. Other times I'm digging through suspicious behaviors with log analytics or threat hunting in Azure Sentinel. Whatever I'm doing, there's always one tool that I can count on to get the job done, no matter if it's hundreds, thousands, or millions of records that I have to get through. And that's KQL, the Cousteau query language. In the last episode, I introduced you to Azure Monitor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use KQL to turn your monitoring data into operational insights in minutes. And stick around to the end. I'll even show you a trick with KQL that I use when pen testing Azure environments. Dean up here. Welcome to the channel that helps aspiring Azure administrators like you and me to know ops and, well, master the Microsoft Cloud. I'm glad to have you here. If you haven't yet, please smash the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I release new videos each week. I promised last week that I'd teach you KQL this week. So let's jump right into Azure and I'll walk you through the fundamentals that you should know that will help you slice and dice your data very, very quickly. Because I don't want to cause an information disclosure incident here at work, I'm going to use some demo data that Microsoft publishes for anyone to use with log analytics. I encourage you to head over to aka.ms slash LA demo and follow along in your own tenant. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay. So we're going to do a very quick whirlwind tour of how to use log analytics and more importantly about KQL. KQL can be used in so many different places like the resource graph or in data explorer. Log analytics is a great place to use it though because A, we can have a lot of data like we've loaded in this demo database and B, the IntelliSense that it provides makes life really easy when we wanna learn how to query it. So in our case here, we're gonna use the security events table. You can notice as I'm typing, it's auto completing for me, giving me the option. So if I hit enter, Boom, I'm right into sec the security events table. In my case, when you'll notice, it went right into a pipe operator. And you can build complex queries using KQL by piping in the output from one command into the other. So you always have to start KQL with grabbing some source data from some sort of table, in this case, the security event table. And we're gonna pipe it into count so we can get an idea of how many uh, records are in the system. And we're going to filter that by, let's say the last seven days, just so we get an idea of for last week, how many records are in here. And we can see we have about 1.9 million records. And that's quite a bit. So we wouldn't want to just grab the uh, table directly. So if I wanted to, I could just say security event, get rid of the pipe. And if I hit enter, this is gonna go query and it could take some time to come back. Uh, obviously I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is say, maybe I just wanna grab uh, 50 records. And so I can use a command called take or limit is an, is an alias to that. And what that'll do is it'll only bring back 50 records. And then I can click the run button and it will bring back over here. You can see it brought back 50 records in 1.8 seconds. Now, one thing to note here is going forward, I'm not going to hit this run button. I'm going to use the shift enter key, which is a shortcut to that so that I don't have to keep moving my mouse and I can get that out of the way for you. So let's go and uh, start using some of this information to our benefit. As an example, you can see here when bringing back in the security events table, I have a whole bunch of columns like time generated and account and the account type and computer and it just goes on and on. And there's like a ton of columns of data here. In my case here, let's go and see what we can do about getting through that 1.9 million records very, very quickly. So maybe go and find things like, oh, I don't know, failed logins or something. So why don't we start by saying, first thing we wanna do is we're gonna filter these records and we're gonna say where time generated. So if you're not aware, time generated is a column that's on all data sources that relate to the time it was inserted into the log store. So in our case here, we're gonna say, just bring us back everything that was in the last day. So we go say a go, which is a time operator. And then we can do one D if I wanted to say, you know, give me um, one minute, I would go one M, but here's this case here, we're just going to say, give me everything from one day. And if we run that, you can see in 4.9 seconds, it's brought back um, well, it says 10,000 records, but you can see down here that it's paging. So it means that there is uh, potential for even more uh, records that are in the system that's there. 
So maybe we'll do something just to make it a little, little simpler. Um, for me, I'm usually working at things that are happening just in time. So I might say from now, and I'll say from in the last 15 minutes, bring me back all the security event logs for where the time generated um, was in the last 15 minutes. Okay, that's a little better, 2,772 records. That's not too bad. Uh, maybe though, I want to be able to um, maybe filter that information. I, I don't need all these columns, like that's, that's a lot of information. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'll use another operator here called project. And what project does is it gives me the opportunity to decide what columns or what piece of information I wanna bring back. So in my case here, I'm gonna say time generated, maybe the account, computer would be useful. Um, I happen to know that there's something here called event ID. That's pretty important. Activity and maybe IP address. Now, obviously you're gonna pull back what you feel is needed to show your information. So if I run this command, we can now see we're only bringing back the columns of information. You can see here under activity as an example, I can see here activity with an event ID of 46 uh, to five, an account failed to log in, which I just happen to know that is the event ID in Windows for this. So let's use that. So maybe what I want to do is not just filter by time generated, we can use more complex queries where I could say where event ID equals four, six, two, five. So you can see we can chain these where commands so that we are take the output from the previous one as the input to the new one, and we can keep going down the line. Now we've brought it down to 2023 records. Now, another way to do things like this where you have multiple where's is you can use the and command. So I could go and say where time generated is in the last 50 minutes and event ID equals 6225. It means the same thing, something to be aware of. Of course, you can use OR operators and, and you can do lots of comparators here. So if you know how to do this in from a scripting perspective, a lot of the constructs that you might be used to in something, let's say SQL queries or in PowerShell, you can very well use here. You just need to know uh, what they represent, okay? So the thing is though that maybe in my case here, what we really wanna do at the end of the day is, is summarize it. We wanna know about these failed logins. So one of the other things we might be able to do here is do something like say, um, <clears throat> we wanna summarize this information and I'm gonna create a new computed column called failed logins. And I'm going to compute it by using the count operator by the computer. So in this case, what it's gonna do is say, I wanna go find group everything by that computer, give me a count of that for each failed login. So now if I go and try to run this, we now can see we have, in this case, one, two, three, four, five different machines and they have different fail counts. Now, you'll notice these aren't in any kind of order. They just happen to group them by what they found uh, in the data. But I could group, I could order them to give me uh, a little more uh, cleanliness to the data as it's coming back. So I could do this by doing order by failed logins. And now we can see that this Contoso job FWJB has had 813 failed logins in the last 15 minutes. Now, not only can we display this in, in table formats, we can actually pipe this in to render into interesting things like bar charts or pie charts. And what we just did is we went from having over 1.9 million records down into a pie chart, which we now could uh, go pin to a dashboard and have available to us if we wanted to. And you can slice and dice this data in different ways. Like maybe I wanna be able to do it by computer, but if I was maybe filtering by different error codes or event IDs, I could filter it by that if I wanted to be able to group these things together. Now here are a few performance optimization tips. Use a WHERE clause as soon as you can and always filter by timestamps first. This will considerably speed up your results set. Also project only the columns that you need. 
We sometimes work with data sets that have hundreds of columns and we only need a few of them. Getting rid of the extra columns can not only help performance, but it makes debugging a whole lot easier. Now let's put this all together with a fun example. I use this when pen testing environments and it's surprising how effective it can be. No matter if your resources are on premises or in the cloud, one security fundamental is that systems that have been running the longest have a pretty good chance of being more vulnerable. Chances are their system kernels and drivers and OS patches aren't being applied or they would have been rebooted. So let's see if we can weaponize that information thanks to perf counters picked up by Azure Monitor. Check this out. Okay, let's go create a new query. It ends up that through Azure Monitor and running of a typical monitoring agent, it'll send back a ton of performance counters to the perf table. And if I was to just do a quick run here, we can see that in the last 24 hours, there's been over 1.6 million records related to some of the servers here in this demo database. Um, I, I want to filter that out and I'm going to go look where the object name happens to represent the uh, system performance counters. And I'm also going to go and look for some special counter names, which I happen to know is system uptime, which represents the uptime for Windows servers. And I'm also going to look for um, where the counter name represents uptime, which represents Linux servers. And what I want to do from this is that I happen to know that the counter value, which represents the data point related to the specific counter name uh, is in milliseconds. So I want to convert this. So I'm going to compute a new column called uptime. And I'm going to just take the counter value and I'm going to multiply it by one S or one second to convert it into uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then I want to just project some information that I want, which would be the time generated, um, the computer, this actual uptime computed value. And I also want the instance name and the instance name will become a little more evident in a minute here. And then I want to summarize it. Now it ends up because there's going to be millions of records here for the uptime uh, counters. I really only want the latest one. So what I'm going to do is use um, something called argmax, which says, just get me in our case for this argument of time generated uh, for all these records. I want to uh, get the latest one for the computer. And then finally, I am going to order this by that new computed column called uptime in descending order. And by doing this, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna say of the 106 million records, I wanna go find all the system records that have a counter of system uptime or uptime so that we can bring back both Windows and Linux servers. And I wanna compute a new column called uptime, which is really just gonna show us uh, in uh, seconds, minutes, hours, and days uh, what the uptime is, and we'll then uh, pull back uh, some of this data and give us the last record. So in other words, once we order this, what we're going to end up getting is a list of the servers that have been running the longest. And here we can see right now that this Contoso VM1 has been running for, well, a very long time, 447 days, and we've got a hardening demo uh, Linux Red Hat box for 426 and Infrascale VMs for 347 and another Windows machine here, re Retail EUS7 for 227. There's some servers here that have been running for over a year. There's a very good chance that they haven't been patched uh, and it might be something for us to look into. These are the kind of cool queries that we can get out of KQL very, very quickly if you know what to do. So KQL is becoming a de facto query language for Azure services and data. Check out the KQL reference for more information, including a variety of examples that you can use to do even more interesting and complex queries. I'll leave a link below in the description for you. I hope I've been able to give you a bit of an idea into just how powerful KQL can be and hopefully inspire you to rethink how you might be able to query your data and turn it into operational insights for your business. Let me know by leaving me a comment and hitting the like button. And if you haven't yet, smash the subscribe button so that you can be notified as I publish more videos. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.